we go pick and ban oh my god we've just opened the overlay and 80 carries are there so the interesting thing is the fact that both teams have kept the same bands as game two despite the fact that they're on the same sides as game one so v5 this time around going to pick up the kaisa for themselves a bit of a hyper carry for y4 the nice thing about it into the Jin matchup is once you hit that level six you do have like the all-in and burst potential coming out but at least lgd should have a a nice uh ad carry matchup but with v5 picking up the galio Galio is a great support into Leona, does counter a lot of her all-in, and does provide a lot of wave control to find the early push and the early roams that V5 would want. Emphasizes your point even more, you know, he's a selfless player, whether he's in the carry position or not, and Galio's going to do exactly that for the side of V5. Olaf paired with him, puts a lot of emphasis on that bottom lane already. And now it's about where LGD go, do go with jungle. The Graves is something we've talked about a lot throughout the first two games. It hasn't been picked up yet, but this is Quay's most played jungler in his career by far. So it would be a nice pickup for him. It was 19 games on the Graves and nine, if I recall correctly, on his uh, following yep. second most played on the Lee Sin. So LGD at least getting some more comfort. And I like that their coaching staff is kind of identifying some of the things uh, that did cause him to lose in sort sort of the areas where V5 do tend to fall flat. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I want to move forward because LGD look like they're going to really progress through this big fan fast. The second phase leads with the set, something that Chance has been prioritizing, so not willing to pick it up in the in the fourth slot on the red side. I would like to see LGD just ban out more mid laners. So we obviously still have the Syndra open. I think the Syndra would work well for both sides, but V5 being the ones to ban it out. Again, that Galio is still a flex pick. It is something yeah. we commonly see to the support role up against the Leona specifically. With a lot of these bans coming out, we're kind of getting into the, the A and B tier of mid lane champions. It feels like mid laners in this series are, are really being respected. Uh, which is a good sign of Beauty Boy to come for this split for this year in the LPL as he debuts. LGD, another support? No. We get rid of the Camille. Top lane is yet to be picked on both sides. So they don't want that strong scissor-legged scissor -legged lady uh, taking over the lane. Nice, nice the descriptive Thank words you. coming out Thank of Sterix. I think the only mid laner that jumps to my mind still being open for LGD could potentially be the Twisted Fate. Of course, the Victor is there as well, and Victor is a very good, like, a zoning control mage that's good into compositions that do come into him. So that is actually what V5 do. So Oy. V5 banning that one out, I think, really does only leave the Twisted Fate. Brother, you're on point here. Let's see. If we see the Twisted Fate, uh, I don't know if we start bowing or, you know, we say bless Lyric because this twist of fate being hovered here gets locked on in and holy dooly sir you are a genius now the question is again what are v5 going to do with the support role the alistar is still open if they want to keep the galio mid and just kind of match that global pressure and play for the mid jungle your other option i think would be going for something like the akali which can definitely play into the twisted fate but you're sacrificing a bit more of your lane pressure though akali definitely doesn't really lose against anyone in this uh, new season but v5 instead going to go for the grogus which doesn't tell us anything that could go top for no. support as well exactly right and you know pp god's a, a player that you know, definitely fit into his wheelhouse let's find out the rise would that would that tell you no it wouldn't it wouldn't tell us it wouldn't tell us a damn thing but we I'm, would get our solo laner uh, yeah blind. exactly I feel like it would at least tell us that Galio would be going into the uh, support position, which has been something mm. we've expected ever since it got locked in. And the Galio is coming through. So again, this is not the first, not Galio, the Rise. This is not the first time that we have seen Rise in uh, the LPL. Of course, we did see RNG nope. pull it out and cry and go on that one the other day. And, uh, you know, I guess the last question is, you know, we expect to see it with Mole. Uh, of course, you mentioned Cryon played it in the mid lane. Uh, we'll pause on that because we'll, we'll get the final rotation from V5 as they change around. But the Nar locked in once again and up into the top side, most likely, as you mentioned, versus the Gragas. Definitely a Nar favored matchup, right? You have the range against melee. Gragas is one of the, I'd say, safer kind of tanky top laners just from the fact that you do have sustain built into your passive and you do have a range Q. So at the very yeah. worst, you can just farm from a safe distance with that Q. Okay, well, run me through LGD's comp quickly because when you have a Twisted Fate, I always talk about hitting side lanes, but I just, I'm just curious as to what lane you hit if you're LGD. For LGD, I like the uh, the... 
point and click CC they have in the mid lane. So this could be a throwback to LGD of 2020, where they were the only team that really played Twisted Fate as this pick to actually set up ganks in the mid lane. We would yeah. usually see most LPL teams kind of leave TF on an island and then obviously support the team with his ultimate. So this time around, LGD can pair up with mid jungle and then try to support that bottom lane as we highlighted. Okay, supporting the bottom line on the other side, V5 run me through quickly before we get into game three lyric because I do like the fact that, you know, we have a, a lot of these engaged tools when you have the Gragas, the Galio, some of the global uh, potential with Realm Warp actually adding in the semi-global. B5, I think, again, are just going to be very bot-centric. Galio will have push in this bottom lane. Again, you just throw out the Winds of War, you, you hit the wave with your passive, and you're able to freely roam. You also set up for the Olaf gank quite well with your taunt and your Justice Punch. The question for me is going to be the mid lane matchup. Again, Ryze isn't a champion we see all that often. He does have the ability to spam the wave early now that Tier has become a starting item. Can just throw out those abilities and start to just kind of give pressure for Weiwei very early on. I'd like to see if Weiwei can take over the game again alongside PP God, because V5 looked great in game two, but LGD, we don't forget the game one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome onto Summoner's Rift once again. EDG and FPX will be played in full after game three so our match of the week coming up you don't want to go anywhere especially when v5 showed us what they did in game number three but game number two but game three is very very different game three is not that lane dominance instead lyric i see a lot of scaling on the board i see the potential for the machine gun rise and the kaiser to take over some of these fights very interesting. Uh, again, we can expect to see Y4 even start popping off as early as level 6. Very mm -hmm. good into a mobile AD carries like Jin when you do have this all-in potential. The Galio countering a lot of what the Leona does, but LGD definitely the team that want to get the foot going at the level 6 mark, right? We need to see those early Twisted Fate ultimates have a nice impact on the map yeah. because a lot of your damage is going to be based around this Jin and this Grave, so we're going to need to see an early lead coming out from LGD. Okay, look for the timers here, especially since the first ult normally dictates as Fatboy is just hitting a little... What animal is nah? That Yordle wolf? <laughs> I actually don't know what, what animal he is. Tiger? Cat. He's a cat. No, he's just, yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think maybe a saber-toothed tiger? Is yeah. that right? That sounds, yeah. that sounds right. I mean, he's not technically an animal, right? He's a Yordle, but... Saber 2 Tiger sounds the closest. Okay, he's a cute one at that. At the, at the very least, look, there's trading going up in the top side. Comet on Gragas. Not something we normally see even up there, but do I have to pause myself? I do. Why 4 gets hit hard? Uh, Lyric, matchup, Comet, top. Why? Honestly, that's a bit of a weird one because one of the reasons, obviously, Gragas has come back into the meta oh, is... Yeah. Ooh. Oh, bloody hell. We just don't stop, do we? Mole has to flash away, but Uniboy used his own. Still, this goes back to what we wanted to see from LGD, right? We said, hey, you have the point and clicks you see in the mid lane. You have the burst with your graves. Kind of set that one up. Rise is a very easy target, especially because we assumed he'd be pushing the wave early on with that tier. So thus far, LGD kind of executing on the win conditions that we set up for them. Yeah, so getting off early means pretty nice uh, recurring gank, especially when Rise, you know, doesn't have a way to survive. He's gone for the TP to get back into the lane, but not to survive it. Uh, push up in the top side here for Colt as well, abusing the range advantage as the wave crashes in. So the only person right now sitting at a CS advantage is Weiwei in the jungle. But I want to go back to that top lane matchup like you were talking Please. about. Though I might not get time as V5 or doing the V5 thing of looking True. for aggressive action on bot side. Quay is going to walk in. But only to clear the ward at the very least for Scuttlecrab. How do we contest? It's three versus three until mid laners get involved. Actually moving down is Mole first, who's level 3 himself. And PP God just has to escape with the flash forward from Chance. Follows with the Zenith Blade. PP God used his in response to four shot. Now has to reload. Garvey flashing with a dancing grenade. But he doesn't get the shot. The undertow there, the deadly flourish a bit to the left. And V5 survived, meaning the top side free to get this engaged. Lung Shing bullies down Colt. As, oh, oh way way God. he's gonna keep yeah. going he has the flash as well he'll burn garvey holding on to that fourth shot good dodge from way way and i think we have time to breathe after all the shenanigans yeah a lot of sun <laughs> oh do we though hysterics <laughs> do we no we don't backs away but no one still no one's died 
Yeah, lots of summoners blown on both sides, and I think we can go back to that top lane matchup we were talking about, because now we do see Longxing starting to win is, you know, one of the reasons Gragas came back into the meta with that phase rush, I think Flandre put it very well in an interview that Gragas is just a very annoying champion for the enemy to deal with. Okay. Uh, it doesn't end gone. hysterics. Nah, it doesn't just stop. Just away. Uh, Quay's on the chase at half health. Doesn't matter. Mole, though, has to be careful. And, you know, they'll just help push out. Now, now tell me. Go back to Gragas. Nothing's happening. We're I don't, good. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we're getting a chance. But, uh, okay. you know, Gragas has a lot of uh, low cooldown abilities. Getting something like the, the phase rush, which you can pretty much just proc very consistently. You can... Uh, throw out your abilities, get in for the trade, and then back out as we have double TP coming into the mid lane. At least you got your point across. At least you got to finish your sentence. Double TP with a Hex Flash and V5. Technically not a waste, but at nope, the very nope. least, nothing happens. It, it was kind of a waste, and I can tell V5 don't want us <laughs> talking about Gragas, but hey, V5's Steel. two TPs, they do get them the Raptor Camp. They were going to have to TP the lane uh, anyway, most likely, at least for Mole in the mid lane, but still... Uh, that was, that was kind of confusing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It's, the whole early game has been a bundle of confusion. Uh, all that we know is that V5 had a gold lead, and now they don't because bottom lane has just taken over with CS, and, you know, top lane's evened out a bit, and, of course, Quay in the jungle uh, getting back some of the CS himself. So, gold even, nothing's happened. A lot of summoners down across the map, but the early game rages on. And we're already seeing the uh, Boots of Lucidity coming out on both sides. This is something we already talked about earlier uh, in, in the broadcast, right? The fact that we all know they got buffed from 15 to 20 Ability Haste. And yep. for reference, 20 Ability Haste is about 17% CDR. So the old Lucidity Boots in Season 10 were only 10%. So that's obviously like a massive buff for this item, which is why we are seeing a lot of champions build these now. And cost hasn't changed, right? You know, you're paying the same amount for better stats when... You know, also Ability Haste can stack a lot better. Uh, going past the cap as Explosive Cast used Body oh. Slam as well. But the Q from Lung Xing, is that the difference? I think it might be. I don't know how you miss that one. As Mole's coming up with a Realm Warp, here we go. V5's comp only goes in Lyric. And this is how they do it best. The flash from Colt was pretty bad. And Mole gets first blood. Uniboy is hovering towards the bottom side though. And V5's bot lane is pushed up. But Weiwei is waiting in the wings. Well, uh, Destiny is global, pretty much. And Uniboy has the range, but not going to use it in the end. And Weiwei just sits there while Dragon's going to start from Quay. And it goes back to that age-old trade of picking up early gold on the map and giving up these early dragons. So LGD with a nice response. But overall, really nice play coming out from Longxing. Going to back and pick up the double Doran. So indexing more into lane laning strength but Colf yep. answering right back there with him picking up two doran's blades and a negatron cloak but meanwhile on the bottom lane way way waited around for this one can't get the shield of Duran onto garvey good dodge away justice punch with the ignite down under token x and that's the slow you need on top of this gin y4 is going to be given the kill as well one to the kaiser one to the rise the scaling begins one of the reasons why we don't typically see again these immobile ad carries like being picked into the olaf even with missing the taunt, the Justice Punch comes up. Weiwei's able to get in range, and they lock that one down. I kind of expected that we were going to get a replay of that top play, but I do just want to give Longxing some praise. I thought that was extremely clean. Throws yep. out the ultimate, chains it into the body slam. Doesn't exactly hit the Q, but again, he's uh, Colt is already so far under Longxing's turret. It gives Mole enough time to come up and secure the kill for himself. Yeah, I'll definitely defend because I think it's being a bit harsh with the Q. If it hit, maybe it was just a clean solo kill or at least close to. Uh, but at the very least, Longxing hitting everything else sets up for Mole to come in. Uh, we just saw there that V5 is being prepped up for their next series against BLG. I like that advertisement because I think for V5, this is going to be a lot easier of a series than BLG is. So it's we get also, to see V5 at this point. It's nice timing because me and you will also be on that series. Hey, yes, we will. That's coming up Monday, folks. So two days away to see V5 once again for all you PP leavers. Uh, V5 in this game, though, we're going to be realistic. Oh, 1,200 gold in the lead after those two kills. And the CS advantage now accruing uh, in that mid lane. Uh, I mean advantage, one or two CS in the extra, but it's a rise versus a twisted fate and Mole's doing well. Uh, and we need to remember one of the changes is a like pause, oh, no. LGD. PP God survives. Garvey comes in as well. Four members mid. They're moving up for the Herald. 
Yeah, and just, just to touch on another point about Rise, right, is that Seraph's Embrace obviously changes well. It doesn't give you the shield anymore. Now it increases your maximum mana by uh, by 5% and ha has Ooh. like a, a scaling percent of your AP as well. True. So that also pairs well with the passive where you gain ability power for your mana and just obviously works with Rise's passive as well. So it is one of the nice changes for Rise in 2021. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, especially when you get a shield off the passive, it's just like, well, do we need it? Not really. B5 on the Herald somehow. Now, LGD moved up to start this, but Garvey started going back down. V5 had vision. And then eventually they take the Herald anyway. I think it's also because Y4 was moving here first. We also have all the key abilities up for the side of E5. I was wrong though, PP got oh didn't God. exactly. Oh the boys! Oh, we're in top side. Holy hell, Colt hates life. What cyber bullies from V5? V5 just going with the tried and true, continuing these dives with their three-man squad in their bot lane. We're going to see Mole have to go back to answer in mid, but LGD just kind of have to accept the pressure. Uniboy is getting a bit of a solo advantage with those turret plates, and Quay is at least answering in the bottom half of the map, but gold strictly in favor of Victory 5. Yeah, it is. Herald up, going to bop right next to him. Uh, or her, excuse me. So first turret of the game goes over and gives the gold to Y4. And remember, it's a Jin and Leona. You're not going to push the turret that fast. So you give up two, three, four plates across the map for another shove in this top side. And what is a pretty good snowball for a comp that didn't need to snowball. The only takeaway from that is that you call the Herald charge a bop. What do you think it is? What, make, what makes it a bop? What it's defines kinda... a bop? I don't know. Bop's more like of a, a, a dance, right? So um, I, I, well, I, 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 I feel like a bop is like a quick action to where the herald kind of charges up more like a like like a whoosh type like thing, a, you know? Okay, all right. Great sound effect. You used to be a musician, so <laughs> you're very good with your sound effects. Oh God, PB uh, well, Yeah, we didn't that see was, that. We didn't see that. That was uh, that was something. It doesn't matter. Look, at this point, V5 is still two thousand gold ahead. It's eleven minutes into the game. They have three kills in their name and. I think crucially, Lyric, we're going to see Mole with his first item towards this next dragon. We're going to see uh, the Noon Quiver of upgraded for Y4. So V5 are in such a good position. And as we have this first turret down, I want you to tell me what happens next and how you can pace this game out if you're V5. For V5, at some point, we're going to definitely see them transition Mole to a side lane and keep their bottom lane in mid. With dragon coming up in 15 seconds... Uh... We're definitely going to see them just kind of keep all of their personnel bot side. Longxing does have teleport, but so does Colt. The problem, mm. though, is Colt is nowhere near having Mega, so I don't know if LGD will actually opt into looking for this fight. I think Colt, you know, especially once that first item as well, with a lot of Nars feel more confident. Uh, we saw the Stride Breaker last game, so let's see what it gets evolved into. B5, though, you mentioned, there's the Dragon. First one of their game. They move it into an Ocean Soul favors this team fighting team favors this rise and kaiser this feels like a v5 game where lgd are going to be fighting against the currents uh you can also see lgd it's not over after v5 they're gonna first edg on tuesday so they also got to ramp themselves up i'm just glad it's not over after their first and only series at lpl that yeah. would be pretty disappointing for a lot of lgd fans out there but uh why four not doesn't really care. Gonna walk for it. Looks like he's trying to bait them, knowing Weiwei's in the wings, of course, with his items as far as his level. He already does have that evolved Q coming out. I like that you talked about Mythics coming out soon. It surprisingly looks like Mole is gonna go towards that Leandrin Anguish, so gonna go for the Burn coming out, consistently True. staying in combat. And another cool part of it is now, you know, it does ignore 5% uh, of magic resist for duration when you are, like, throwing out your abilities up to 15%, so... Gives a bit more burst than the old Leandries did as well. And feels like V5 are just on a very good uh, path towards continuing to accelerate this game. Which is nice to see, you know, this form of control in the early game for V5, something throughout this whole series we've talked up. Guys, if you're just tuning in, you know, V5 had an atrocious game one. LG took over and then kind of climbed their way back up in this series. And we're in a game three where... This is all about control. V5 not really giving up anything. They've set themselves up for the Ocean Soul with three dragons left to take. Next, Herald will be coming up shortly too. And, you know, Mole's going to feel pretty good if he can extend the mid lane, if he can push out and start using the gaps in vision to realm warp and fully commit with the rest of V5. 
Yeah, and we're, we're still at a point where we're kind of waiting to see the bottom lane turret broken down by V5. That too, an yep. interesting thing to know is the fact that Long Xing has built the Sunfire Aegis when, again, he's going this Comet Rune. Mm. Because you would think at least had he gone, uh, you know, maybe a, a tankier no, summoner would be able thing. to benefit. Well, or like uh, if he had gone Aftershock, right, being able to benefit oh, true, off true, like true. the max HP and the resistances. Or like you're saying, right, just going the typical Graga shot of the Night Harvester. Instead, kind of indexing into both areas, took the Comet for a bit of like a stronger laning phase, which I guess we did see him use, but still realizing, hey, my only role on this team is to kind of be a meat shield for my carries in Mole and Y4. Yeah, alongside Weiwei and PP God. Uh, Lyric, I also wanted to bring something up as the Leandris you mentioned does come through. Whether I have time depends on Quay here. Because PP God's walking into Fog of War. Smoke screen there, but Justice Punch with a full commit. Shield of Duran. Quay flashes over the wall immediately. Realm Warp, though. Here comes Molly Molly as Quay is just on the wrong side of dodge. Destiny uses a counter engage or maybe just to stop the play from V5. And V5, not really fighting over anything, though. I remember talking to some of the LPL team coaches last split, and when I brought up this idea of like fighting over nothing, they didn't really understand it. They, they kind of thought, what do you mean fighting over nothing? If, if we can get a pick, we can turn that into like more vision control, which could potentially turn into like a dive as we are seeing here, or even just more gold. So it is kind of nice, the LPL philosophy being so different from a lot of what we hear in the West. Yeah, I mean, just the region Whether in right general. or wrong, to be fair. Yep. Whether right or wrong, who knows, but... We have an open mind. I mean, a lot of the time, LPL can be wrong, but right within the own region. As turret yep. number one goes down for LGD, but this is the play once again. Weiwei's setting up to bully at Uniboy. Mid lane turret's going to go down, and, you know, for V5, this feels pretty nice for the comp, and right before Dragon and that Herald that has just spawned. It definitely opens up more uh, potential zones for your team to control now that you can pivot to either the top or bottom side of the map. Uh, V5, I would expect potentially at some point to pick up this Herald with the fact that Weiwei's here, they are going to already go for it. After this, you channel your recalls, you start getting the vision down towards the bot side for that Dragon and picking up that bot tier 1. So V5 having a very telegraphed next, let's say, 2-3 to three minutes of gameplay. And there's something I want to talk about the comp where if it was even, I was going to say, well, this could be the downfall of V5. But considering that they can just go in, right? They go one direction. They do not kite back well. They full on engage with Realm Warp, Hero's Entrance, Killer Instinct, you know, name an ultimate, name an ability. It's only forward. So V5, as I can hear the ambulance maybe for LGD going past, they're a team that can corner themselves into a bad play, but can also just catch out LGD on the fly. Yeah, they, they, they have certain tools. They have very decisive engage abilities like you're talking about. They can mm. eventually play out a 1-4 a style. You don't expect to see Gragas winning a side lane, but Mole definitely will. The good thing for LGD, though, they obviously have pick tools as well. You have the Destiny. You have the ultimate coming out from the Jin to, like, catch people out. The Destiny also makes it so you don't necessarily need to be on an objective first. You don't have to face check Vision. So even with a gold deficit, LGD's comp doesn't have them out of this game. Caught with an ulti. Maybe can bring him up through the top lane is Lung Xing. The solar kill, explosive cast, no potential. Destiny used, as you said, into the fog of war. Uniboy has gold card, used to heal with the unsealed spell book as he flashes away everyone from LGD here. Lung Xing tanks up enough, wastes a bit of time. While solar kill in the mid lane almost happens, Y4 burns the killer instinct. There is no trade yet, but B5 say no, Hysterics. We got the bottom lane turret. Now we're going for mid and the inner in this bot side too. And this is definitely a bigger win for V5, right? Sure, you lose Long Xing, but he was able to buy time and take up uh, resources and pressure. Picking up two kills, might even, uh, picking up two towers, I'm sorry, might even potentially be able to get more with the fact that they do have this Herald. And overall, it's been nice, steady-paced gameplay coming from V5. Yeah. It's been gameplay that you can say is, is cool, calm, collected, controlled. Uh, Lyric, just on the side note, Mole has 200 CS. Can he get out with the Realm Warp is the next question. Okay. And the third statement is, Uniboy, where are you going? <laughs> I Wait, mean, he's looking to collapse, but... And gold card, he has flash. Is he going to burn it? Is anyone going to come in? Yes, he flashes in the end. The shield needs to get from the passive here as Mole gets the MR shield. Why fall though? No killer instinct. Use it in the previous play. Is in a choke. The explosive cast. So nice from Lung Xing. And LGD are now stuck here. Chance without one. Without a chance, that is. As he goes back in with the center plate, he knows he's dead. More kills donated to V5, and that'll be all she wrote. 
desperation coming out from LGD when they honestly don't need to be desperate. They have avenues to get back into this game, but instead forcing everything for this pick on Namol, you can see it in like Uniboy's uh, movement. He's like thinking, do I flash for it? Is it worth it? I'm not quite <laughs> sure. Goes for it in the end. Y4 is here. Victory 5 have a Galio on their side of the map. Longxing is TP. Everything is in favor of V5 at this point. Nice ultimate coming out from Longxing. And at this point, it's done and dusted. You know both members are going to go down as the rest of LGD isn't even there. And again, the only way I can describe that play was it looked like a bit of a desperation coming out from LGD. Has to be because LGD just falling to the wayside the clock obviously on their screen and they're thinking well there's 20 minutes in the game and we're, we're obviously down gold we're down so many resources this rise is stacking up he's almost got two items there's an archangels now just built that'll be a seraphs now if not shortly and so mole's in a great position he's got so much cs why for the same and v5 can't step a foot wrong in this game with two more to ocean soul as well yeah, and when yes. Seraphs, which it is Seraphs, oh, as I stop, yes. this Uniboy's going yes. in. Max range here for the Deadly Flourish, but Pippi God's taken no damage. They may have found another pick, though. Onto Weiwei, who gets his Solar Flare down. Collateral damage doesn't kill him, though. The fourth shot will be blocked by Mole and Y4, who are absolute brothers to Weiwei. And that's another throw out from LGD, trying to find that pick. LGD trying to take every chance they can find. Colt does have Mega, so I don't think Longxin can necessarily do anything in this position, but... You know, they almost found the pick, but it doesn't really equal out to anything in the end. And now we're just going to see resets coming out from both sides. And you know what, Lyric, if it was a pick maybe like 30 seconds from Dragon, even with Weiwei getting low, LGD could take that Dragon away. But it's a minute 50, timers don't sync up, they can't get the Baron, especially with a composition like this that does it so slow. And so V5 get to come back out on the map and keep pushing the sides. One thing to keep in mind as well is that V5's comp actually does do Baron quite quickly. They do, yeah. uh, rise with the Leandries. You're going to just be kicking down the Baron so fast. And of course, the Kai'Sa is amazing at burning Baron. So LGD always need to be cognizant of the fact that V5 can go for that cheeky Baron sneak. As they push up towards the Baron side now, trying to clear the vision. In a choke once again for LGD. PP God is charging forward. Y4 doing the same with Gale Force. Colt takes an extra shot as he's about to go into Mega Nar, but he's at half health with explosive cast. Being dodged by the Gale Force of Garvey this time around. LGD back on the defensive and V5 on the aggressive purple worm. And they could just do this with two man. They do have the others kind of feigning pressure in the mid lane. Uniboy doesn't have destiny, but it is up in four seconds. But will he get nearby? I mean, he has to walk out into lane while this is being done so quickly. Destiny being used. He has no smite with the spell book and he can't get there anyway. Goes down and he teleports in. But now can they kill the top laner? Lungxing's dead. Yes, is the answer as Chance dies as well. Four versus four definitely favors V5 with the spike in these items. As forward into the choke, Y4 has already used the killer instinct. He's at half health and Uniboy has no flash to follow through, but goes away with the cleanse. Garvey flashes forward, but to his death. Mole takes him down and that play is going to cost them everything as PP Gods out and LGD are away. V5 taunting LGD, not with the Galio, but with y Force positioning, does get them the kill onto Garvey. They have the Baron, they went for the cheeky play, Hysterics. Now they can go into this either 1-3-1, one, one, or I'd say probably better 1-4 setup for the fact Gragas oh. doesn't have TP. Look at Mole, he hasn't been spotted out though. You thought this dragon was yours? Here's the machine gun <laughs> rise! Onto Quay, he might die to dragon lyric, oh. just as punch, dead! to Kaiser, the winds of war for dragon that's insult to injury as the jungler just gets maged just small positioning and like vision plays that v5 are doing and lgd aren't thinking about landing that awesome play getting a kill and again now they can just push up they have a 5v4 on the map they have baron lgd don't have the greatest wave clear just all the cards are right for v5 here we go, into the Inhibitor, a 6,000 gold lead. 23 minutes into the game, this is more than a shellacking. This is a spank lacking, right? This is all about V5 and how they played these lanes and how dominant they've been in the first portion of this game. Double Inhibitor goes down, what? Okay, Uniboy must have been caught out or at least needed to leave, so nope. he teleports away. Uniboy, I'm guessing, was just reacting to the fact that V5 could have potentially pushed the Nexus. I don't okay. know why he didn't just, you know, channel a, a recall. To be fair, he does have Unsealed Spellbook, so we're actually idiots. 
It True. just seemed he wanted to change summoners. I'm not too sure why he would necessarily want to just change to Ignite. A team fight could potentially be brewing soon as V5 are going to push, so just another offensive summoner for the fight would be my guess. But point is, this game heavily in favor to V5. They're 3 minutes and 40 seconds away from having an Ocean Soul, which is going to feel massive. And we've already seen the damage that Mole can do by himself. True. The Mole's, uh, I, I think, in a 1v3 state. 13th on the side of the screen that a lot of our uh, audience can see. This is a great time to talk about the strength of V5 in the upcoming season. Again, one series doesn't define a team. So don't take this away as LGD being a bottom tier team. They challenge V5 in game one. They've just fallen out to the early game, which has really defined this series as they crash up to the top side, looking for their first series win of 2020. So they go in for the engage as the explosive cast was great. Nicely done from Lungqing. He's had a great game as Colt gets a good ult, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's all over. Red Rover as V5 Realm Warp in. Moles dominating. And Uniboy, is he going to die to a support? Peepy got under the turret. Could actually find his maker as well. Just as punches away, but versus one, two Nexus turrets. V5 are going to win out and take the series two to one as LGD on look. This was a clinic of a game to end us off.